So this is uh, part two of my uh, 12 and 24 cylinder uh, engine build. So this is uh, week two uh, of it. And to just show you what I've uh, accomplished in uh, the week since I made the first one. Uh, so now I've got, I don't have the red engine here, but so I got four uh, of the rototiller engines put together pretty much. Uh, my new intake manifolds on them. And I uh, want to make this video in a couple of uh, segments so it'll be broken up. Here I'll be talking about what I'm working on, a bit of the design, and then later on I'm going to talk a bit about uh, 24 cylinder engines. So I will start off by showing um, what it takes to transform one of these scrapyard rototiller engines or lawnmowers into, uh, you know, a decent looking engine for use on a project like this. So this is an example of the way they look when I get them. As you can see really dirty all the way around. And then after a couple hours of cleaning, wire brushing, bar sawing, so it's like you know, cleaning with the uh, uh, chemicals, that type of thing, uh, they can look more like this. The, I discovered today uh, that overpainting some of the paint uh, doesn't always work very well. Uh, paint incompatibility, I guess, is what's going on. But they don't turn out looking too, too bad. And I'm painting up all the head bolts silver. So these are the bolts off of, well, this is two engines now. There was three in, in the cup. So I wire wheel them and then paint them up silver so they look much better in the end. Kind of reminiscent of the Napier show motors. If you see them in museums and things, a lot of them have uh, chromed bolt heads. Okay, so then uh, to show you the scale of what's going on here, the first thing I actually bought was uh, 24 25 mufflers. So there's 24 of them lined up. And here we have a couple of uh, chain sprockets there. Now I'll review a little bit of my design. It's a windy day and the weather has actually held me back this week. We've had snow uh, three or four days. Not much accumulation but just cold enough to snow. So not typical mid-April weather. Anyway, so we got four engines in a square basically. And then a common central shaft for timing to keep them all together otherwise you know they could fire at any random uh, time so that's the in effect timing shaft and it'll also come in handy for starting and then it'll be supported by a metal frame to hold it all together now, see the winds picking up it's been a pretty windy day today that's been causing me grief with the paint Okay, so then this is from the side. You got uh, six engines in the bottom row and six in the top, so that'd be 12 cylinders, and then it's duplicated on the far side, so that'd be 24. So at the start, I'm just going to make the first uh, three in a row, on the top and bottom in the square, so that'll be you know, three times four is 12 cylinders. So that's what I'm aiming for right now. I'm sure I'll have some bugs to work out as far as chain tension and things like that, but that's my uh, basic design. Still working on the exact placement of uh, uh, the center shaft relative to the motors. It's just got to do with uh, the chain length. Uh, the sprockets have a certain number of teeth on them, and so you have to figure all that out. I mean, I could do it by, you know, x 
obviously physically fitting the chain on there, but I want to be uh, I want to be close. Uh, I don't want to have to weld it up and then cut it apart because the uh, chains didn't want to work. So anyway, that's just a little bit of the uh, design there. I'll try to keep these videos relatively short, but uh, just to keep you informed also. So basically, I'm still. Uh, cleaning uh, engines for uh, use on this and then I will get started on the frame but like I say the weather has not been overly cooperative uh, this week. Now I'll move on to uh, 24 cylinder discussion. Okay so here in the second half of the video I'll uh, just review for a minute. So this is the Napier Sabre engine the one I'm <clears throat> trying to build the 24 cylinder to be as similar to as I can uh, it was the motor of the Hawker Typhoon uh, aircraft, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, got dual crankshafts with four cylinders in a flat H pattern. Now, when it was uh, being designed and built, it did have a rival, and Rolls Royce. This wing's really causing me problems here. Rolls-Royce built a 24-cylinder Vulture engine uh, basically to compete with the Napier Sabre. Uh, it was a similar size made out of uh, two uh, Kestrel engines put together basically. Uh, but it only used one crankshaft so it had 24 cylinders on one crankshaft and the main problem it had was with connecting rod failure Here's the connecting rod design for it. It's your master rod here, and then split line bearings, and, and then three pinned connecting rods. And so basically in cross section, it looked like this. Uh, X-shaped engine with the master connecting rod and the three pinned connecting rods. Uh, unfortunately, it had a nasty habit of breaking connecting rods and uh, so they lost a bunch of aircraft. Initially it was designed for the two-engined uh, Manchester bomber uh, that uh, became the four-engined Lancaster later in the war with four Merlins instead of two Vulture engines. So the Vulture uh, wasn't really a successful engine and they also put it in a version of the uh, Hawker uh, fighter called the Tornado uh, instead of the Typhoon. It was the same plane, just different engine. So <clears throat> Rolls really wasn't too happy about the Napier beating them out on the the bid for the engines of the new fighter. So it was a little bit of bad blood between the companies. The funny thing is though that uh, Rolls Royce's last piston engine was in fact another 24 cylinder flat H uh, like an enlarged version of the Napier Sabre that's the Eagle 22 and unfortunately it wasn't super successful either um, another view of it here if I can get it before the wind wreaks havoc get my weights back onto it I got a big paperweight here, but I don't really want to put it on. That's a Rolls Royce Merlin piston. See, it's basically as almost as large as the Hawker Typhoon model is. But anyway, here's another view of the Rolls Royce Eagle. See the same thing. It's a six in a row, six in a row, duplicated on the far side. It's basically the same layout, uh, flat H as the Napier Sabre. So, uh, as I mentioned in the first video, in case. Uh, uh, you know, you, you haven't watched it. Uh, the reason I'm building this uh, this 24 cylinder engine is none of the Napier Sabres have ran since 1956. So uh, there's two projects in the world working on Hawker Typhoons at the moment, and it'll be a number of years before they get them going and flying. So I thought I would try to uh, get a 24 cylinder engine running just so that uh, well, I want to hear what it sounds like. Now, an interesting thing 
I don't know about the Rolls Earth Eagle, but I know the Napier Sabre, it actually, uh, even though it had 24 cylinders, it fired two of them at one time. And uh, I'm working on a diagram of that, uh, the firing order of it, because I will duplicate it. Um, but uh, it would it would fire, say, uh, the, the back one of the far bank at the same time as, we'll say, the, the front one of the lower bank. And so the, the top and bottom use the same firing order on the uh, flat 12s, basically, but uh, at just a, a different time. So at any time there would be exhaust coming out of two exhaust ports. So you'd only hear, in effect, 12 uh, exhaust notes instead of 24. Uh, in a full cycle. So just a way they decide to do it. I guess it minimized vibration or something. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will uh, keep uh, working on this and have more to show you next week. Thanks for watching.